Our Southwest Michigan Newcomers Club comes in at 9.30 this morning. Right now, though, Deborah and Stuart in the studio with us. Good morning. How are you guys? Good morning. Good morning. Fine, thank you. Good. You're doing well? Yeah. Glad Thank to hear that. Thanks for having um, us on. Hold on just one second. I, uh, I've got to make sure I um, do everything I'm supposed to. It is 9.07. This is WSJM AM 1400 and uh, FM 94.9. We are the news and talk of Michigan's Great Southwest. Uh, i got to tell you, this is a very exciting moment because I, first of all, didn't know that there were pyramids in Bosnia. Um, and I can't wait to find out more about that. But anything that happens in the Oak Room at the Citadel is very cool. I think. Uh, it's just another way uh, for us to celebrate the arts in Benton Harbor, and the Citadel is a little bit of everything. It truly is. Stuart, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Terrific. And Stuart, um, you are actually, can I say this? You're an intuitive consultant. You can say that. I don't even know if there is a title for what I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, My I wife guess, tells me that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say that. I've called many other titles, but that's a good one. Very cool. The, uh, uh, the whole idea behind this, obviously, with both events, first one being the Montauk Chronicles. It's a free screening with questions and answers with the producer. Uh, Christopher uh, will be at the... Oak Room, 7 o'clock this Saturday night. Free food and wine at both events. And then Pyramids Around the World and Lost Pyramids of Bosnia. It's a free lecture uh, by Dr. Sam. I'm not even going to go. Uh, you can probably say Osman Akic. Osman Akic. Close? Very good. All right. Thank you very much. Also happening on Sunday, September 30th at 7 o'clock. So this weekend, um, some very interesting things. Now, the picture of the Montauk Chronicles is uh, very alien-like. Yeah, it's not my picture. It is not your picture. No. It's not People what you look think like it in the is, but it is. Yeah. <laughs> Stuart, talk to us about this whole event on Saturday. Let's start there. Well, well, Montauk Chronicles is the outgrowth of a very long period of time of research and uh, history, and a lot of people out there may not know what was going on back then in the 1970s and 80s. Uh, the U.S. government, Soviet government, many governments around the world were involved in mind control experimentation and programming people. Wow. And this film, Montauk Chronicles, is about my personal experience from 1970 to 1983. Not just mine, but those who were involved in that uh, particular project. Uh, and it uh, details all the information uh, and a lot of the recreated scenes in the film are about my childhood experiences at the time. Can we delve? Can can you tell us a little bit about those experiences? Well, well if you ask me really nicely, yes, all I, right. I will do that. Can you tell me which governments were involved in your life? Well, actually, my great uncle Yakov Sverdlov was the first president of the Soviet Union, and because wow. of yeah, and my grandmother was a Soviet spy, and my grandfather was sent to Britain and to the United States to help uh, found the Communist Party a long time ago. And so because of that, my family was heavily monitored by the U.S. government and other governments. And so I was taken in uh, in 1970 in the Montauk Project and used as a subject of those experimentations. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. You look terrific. Thank you. It's all done with makeup. <laughs> This is fascinating to me. So um, the reason we're actually talking about this, obviously, we put a movie. You put a movie together. Were, how involved were you in the in the writing of the movie? In the well, screenplay? I wasn't involved in the writing of the film, but I did play myself. Was a tough tough character to film. <laughs> <laughs> Had to audition, and I got the part. That's good. And I did uh, play myself in the film, and um, I did help with the recreation of uh, some of the scenes and events that occurred at that time period. Um, and also there are some other people that appear in the film who uh, were scientists in the project and who had investigated it and uncovered many uh, different events that occurred then. So when we talk about, um, and we're almost up to our first break, but when we talk about this overall period, is the film actually about the 13-year period, 14-year period? Correct. It's about what led up to the uh, uh, project, it's about what happened during the project, and it gives a little bit of a hint of what happened afterwards. This is fascinating to me. I can't wait to uh, get out of this break and come back and talk more with Stuart about the Montauk Chronicles, which, uh, i got to tell you, mind control reminds me of the movie uh, Conspiracy Theory yes. uh, with Mel Gibson. So, very interesting. Stay with us. It's coming to the Oak Room. It's this Saturday, downtown Benton Harbor at the Citadel. 
More details next. It is 9-12. You are in the spotlight. Brought to you by Williamson Employment Services. It is 9-14. In the spotlight with Brenda Lane. I'm Mark DeRocher filling in for Brenda till tomorrow. She'll be back. Williamson Employment Services brings you in the spotlight Monday through Friday right here on WSJM. Placing people first, visit WilliamsonEmployment.com. In the studio with us, we're talking with Stuart and Deborah. And Deborah is a pianist extraordinaire. Uh, she has uh, performed everywhere from... Uh, the Bistro to, you were just uh, at Miller Auditorium, right, in August? Yes, the Howard Performing Arts Center at Andrews University. Very nice. The um, uh, reason you're with us is because you'll be providing live music at both events, right? Yes. Both Saturday and Sunday. Yes, on Saturday I'm going to do just a brief 15, 20 minute performance and then the movie will start and then on Sunday I'll be uh, providing some music kind of during the reception and book signing after the lecture. All right. Sounds wonderful. Deborah, thank you very much. Um, have you seen the film? No, not yet. So you're sticking around to watch? Oh, definitely. Yeah, because Stuart, I'm uh, very intrigued about this whole mind control thing that, uh, you know, we read about kind of in history books, but only delicately, and we always blame the Germans, that the Germans did it. Come to find out, uh, that's who started it. Well, actually, mind control goes back uh, literally hundreds of thousands, and even thousands of years. The really? Persians even... Uh, developed mind control with uh, drugging soldiers, uh, making them believe they were dead, and then uh, reviving them in a paradise and telling them to go back to earth and perform the functions that the sultan wanted them to perform. So that's the origin of modern, so-called modern mind control and programming. Wow. But the Germans did pick that up, and in the concentration camps, which they literally had captive audiences, they did perform all types of uh, mind control programming, uh, to see how far they could break and fracture personality and then reprogram the components or compartments uh, that were uh, remained after the fracturing of the personality. And then after the war, under Project Paperclip, which the U.S. finally admitted they did back in the year 2000, uh, they brought Nazi scientists to the U.S. and even to Britain uh, <coughs> to continue the experimentation here and in Canada. So, uh, when we as a government admit that we did it, I mean, is this one of those things that the president, maybe a newly elected president, goes, oh my gosh, we did that? I guess we have to admit we did that. Well, is it, is it a, a process to get Congress to? No, the U.S. will never officially admit they did that. Oh. Because if they did, they would be responsible for the mental conditions of tens of thousands of people. Mm. Now, a few years ago, the Canadian government allowed their citizens to sue the U.S. government from mind control experiments that were performed in Canada. Uh, and that was six, seven years ago, and then the story was kind of dropped from the news. But in the U.S., they will never admit that. Okay. Liability. Absolutely. Right. Astronomical amounts. So, yes. so the purpose of, of this mind control was basically to control a, a group of people to perform it. Heinous crimes, I'm assuming? All kinds of uh, functions, and there have been movies out uh, that kind of uh, talk about that. For example, Mulholland Drive, Eyes Wide Shut. Uh, there's been many films uh, about mind control and programming, more, more so recently. Uh, but there are many functions. Many of them can be uh, vigilante programming, stalker programming, assassin programming. I mean, you name it. And they came up with a, uh, a mind control function for that. Wow. So, uh, and this is kind of like, I call it Black Hollywood, when you find out horrible things that are real. Uh, and this, this kind of a Black Hollywood-esque uh, thing really happened, and that's what The Chronicles is about, right? It's about the, uh, what happened here in the United States during that time period. So really, it focuses on what uh, is considered to be one of the biggest mind control experiments or programs that existed uh, in U.S. history. So, in your opinion, is this something that you think our government knew fully about, like all the way up to the president, or do you think they, there are some things they don't tell the president because the CIA or whoever it is, it's basically, and I'm assuming it's CIA or FBI. You know, the CIA is kind of low level compared to the people that perform these uh, oh. experimentations. You have to look more towards the NSA, National Security Agency, or uh, up until a few years ago, NSA stood for no such agency. <laughs> and so and now they admit they exist, and they were part of the groups that were behind uh, these. And there were many factions. There are many factions. I can't just say it was one particular group. Um, so this whole um, controlled experiment happened here in the States, in Russia, and Great Britain. 
It happened in Canada, uh, Great Britain, Soviet Union, China. The Soviets also used Romania, Bulgaria, as ex and Czech Republic as experimental locations. Uh, right, right now, in 2012, it's global. Uh, all the satellites out there that ring the Earth are transmitting ELF and microwave transmissions that could be programming people as we speak. That just is mind-blowing to me. And this is all chronicled in the Montauk Chronicles. The, the film is going to be uh, uh, debuted on Saturday, 7 o'clock, doing yes. questions and answers afterwards? Correct. Uh, the film actually premiered in May in New York. Oh, okay. And then in June, I took the film to South Africa and premiered it uh, twice there. Okay. And uh, after this particular showing here in the Midwest, I'll be taking it to uh, Bangkok for the International Press Club uh, Asian premiere. Do you look over your shoulder a lot? Uh, yes. I would be uh, very paranoid knowing this information. I'm used to that. So, I bet. Uh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Stuart, your role in this, um, as you mentioned at the top of the show, because of your lineage, yes. uh, you have been pretty much watched uh, by the government for years. Correct. I think I mentioned, or maybe maybe it was off the air, that my great uncle was the first president of the Soviet Union. You did mention that. So that's where it starts, and then you obviously being connected that way probably were exposed to a lot more information than most yes. you know, average citizens, no matter what country you're in. That's correct. Uh, and that's kind of how this all came about for you. So. We'll take another quick break. We're going to come right back. I want to find out how you kind of compiled this info and how you put this all together and uh, what is your goal with this information and this, uh, this new film. Okay? Thank you. All right. And Deborah, I wish you would have brought your piano with you because it would be perfect to be playing bumper music right now. I'm sorry. I... You did bring a CD. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me see if I can figure out how to do that. <laughs> in the back here. I'll work on that while we take a quick break. It is 921. We'll check out the weather forecast in just a minute. I'm Mark DeRocher in for Brenda Lane, and you are in the spotlight on WSJM. <laughs> Deborah Wyndham. And no, she doesn't own the chain of hotels. <laughs> I wish. Because <laughs> <laughs> then you'd have a lot of places to play. <laughs> exactly. She will be our uh, beautiful accompanist for Saturday's event, 20 minutes before the film, uh, Montauk Chronicles, which we uh, can get ticket information from you on. Uh, yes. Uh, well, actually, it's uh, free admission. Uh, no reservations required. It's just first come, first serve. We do have limited seating, though, and we do expect standing room only um, because we've had a lot of interest in these events. Um, both events start at 7 p.m. There'll be free food, free wine by White Pine Winery and the free live music. We do accept donations, very gratefully. So. <laughs> okay. We'll make sure that uh, we have our checkbooks with us when we come. <laughs> This is exciting. Now, Sun Sunday's event, we need to talk about just for a minute before we get back to Stuart. Uh, pyramids Around the World and Lost Pyramids of Bosnia. It's a free lecture. Um, Dr. Osman Agic. Osman Agic will be in there, uh, and basically walking us through this. I am amazed, first of all, because I didn't know there were pyramids anywhere except... I think maybe Mexico and Egypt, I think, are the only two I've ever heard of. So this is fascinating. You'll discover the first pyramids of the European continent in his home country of Bosnia, 2005. It's an amazing site. includes five pyramids and an extensive underground tunnel system. And he'll talk about that for quite a bit. Uh, about 90 minutes is what I think I've read uh, about Possibly, the possibly more. Okay, very good. Uh, free food and wine, White Pine Winery, you got to love them. They're right downtown St. Joe. And, of course, uh, anything that happens at the Citadel, you have our 100% support. Uh, so the Oak Room will be alive for sure. Deborah, thank you very much. This is beautiful. By the way, this is Deborah actually playing. I'm playing her disc right now. This is track eight off the beginning, piano compositions. It's called Hurry Now, which sums up my life. Um, <laughs> in a way. Right, honey? I know she's nodding at home. So, uh, Stuart, we were uh, at the point where your involvement, obviously, in uh, the mind control that we've been talking about. Um, this whole motivation for you, obviously, has got to be kind of cathartic, I would imagine. Yes, in fact, uh, back when, a few years, about almost 20, over 20 years ago, I wrote, I started writing my memoirs, my, my autobiography, if you will because uh, I thought I wasn't going to really survive very long, and I wanted my children to know what happened to me. Wow. But that book uh, then became published, and that uh, led to the film uh, and other events, and I took the information 
that I was subjected to during that time period, and I learned uh, techniques, how to deprogram from that, and that's part of the work that I do today, helping people take this out of their minds and uh, to, to reorganize and merge their mind patterns back together. That is quite a mission you're on, and quite a calling. Well, it keeps me busy all the time. I'm sure it does. And the fact that you you look great, you're very healthy, I'm assuming. Yes, I uh, thank you. Yes, and I know he eats right because his wife makes sure of that. She's right mm -hmm. here. Um, but the important part for everyone to know is to come in with an open mind because this is reality. And the Montauk Chronicles uh, on Saturday night at 7 o'clock at the Oak Room will uh, open your eyes to quite a few things that maybe you should know. I agree. I can come with an open mind. And uh, I'd be lo I, I would be talking to people afterwards and see what they think. I bet. I, I, uh, I, I would be fascinated, uh, and I'm going to have to check with my wife to see if we are tied up on uh, Saturday, because uh, this is something that just totally, you have awestruck me uh, with this whole, uh, the whole theory, and obviously the reality of this, because you lived it. And here you are, uh, fine now, deprogrammed and... Well, not 100%. Anyone who says they're 100% the program isn't being truthful. I'm still working on myself. I'm, a, I'm a, in process, as my wife will tell you. Okay. Well, she's obviously a strong woman. Yes, yes. And, and no drugs. That's good. Yeah. That is excellent. <laughs> All right. Well, folks, thank you both very much. Deborah, uh, you'll be playing both Saturday and Sunday night, uh, The Oak Room. And uh, if, you, if you'd like to pick up Deborah's CD, it's at the Box Factory. Yes. Is that right? Is it available online at all? Yes, it's on my website also, DeborahWindham.com. And that's W-Y-N-D-H-A-M. Correct. Right? Dot com? Yes. All right. This one is the beginning, uh, and it is beautiful. So thank you so much, both of you, for being here. Stuart. Thank you. Deborah. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. And again, free events both Saturday and Sunday. Uh, be generous with your donations. Free food and white pine wine. Sounds great for this weekend. It's 9.30. We're going to take another break. We'll be right back. We'll talk with the Southwest Michigan Newcomers Club next. Lynn Kay will be in the studio with us. Oh, man. You're really going to give this to me? Yo, oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. This will be very relaxing music. <laughs> yeah. For me and my wife to detox from our five children. <laughs> Thank you so much.